What is going on guys, Jack95 Gaming here, we're back with episode number 27 of our West Ham United career road. As you can see guys, we're kicking off the episode with a game against Shrewsbury in the Capital One Cup. So, uh, pretty much an easy test for us if you um, think about it. Shrewsbury in League One, maybe in the Championship, I'm not sure yet. Um, I don't really know their actual position in the group or in their league at the moment. As you can see, that I've made it to the round of 16, we've probably got the easiest tyre of them all um, when you look at it guys. So I hope we can get a win here. Obviously I start with Bradshaw up front, a player that... I know, and John Taylor and Goldston. So it's a very good team, but hopefully we can get the win in this one. And as you can see, guys, in the fourth minute, it is actually Shrewsbury that pick up the ball here with John Taylor using his um, pace there. He puts the shot across, guys, but it literally is just an easy shot for Henderson to um, will take down. And then, as you can see here, guys, Mudabamiaga picks up the ball from a great ball into him. He takes the shot, and again, it just goes wide. Again, it, this is a game filled with very poor chances, if I'm being honest. Um, no team really played well in this one. Um, it was a very frustrating game to play. Just no one was getting clear cut chances, and it was just a game where everyone was just losing the ball. But at half time, guys, right on the half time, Miyaga does pick up the ball here. Vaste makes the run, beats the offside trap, you know, just literally gets an inch ahead of it, maybe. Um, puts the shot in, and it's a good save from their goalkeeper, so he's kept them in the game here. And we're moving to the second half now, guys. And Bia picks up the ball, we're kicking off the second half, um, starting dominance. Um, Miyaga picks up the ball, plays it in to Yanuzai, takes the ball down well, heads it down. It's a good header away from Shrewsbury. They pick up the ball here, Summerfield loses the ball from a Diarmi tackle, falls back to more about then plays it into the path of Adan Yanuzai and tons of space, guys. He composes himself, takes a shot. Very poor goalkeeping there, you could argue, from the goalkeeper. Because Yanuzai does put a, a weakened shot, really, into the back on it. But we're not complaining, guys, because we do go 1-0 up in this one. Um, 48 minutes gone onto the, like, onto the, um, the clock here, guys. And it... Yanuzai does put us 1-0 up, so good stuff there from a um, West Ham point of view. Um, the young man getting on the score sheet, good, so that's another good um, point of view here. You need to look at it from Adan Yanuzai, a good confidence booster, because he hasn't really been performing lately, but you know, that goal is really going to boost his confidence, so well played there from Adan, and um, we find ourselves 1-0 up. So the goalkeeper, obviously, very gutted, obviously keeping his team in it, but only until the 48th minute, because um, Adan Yanuzai gets the goal there. Into the 68th minute now, guys. Um, and Bia picks up the ball here, he's running with the ball, he plays a great over the top ball into um, <laughs> Ricardo Vazte and his uh, volley just goes wide. Into the last 15 minutes of this game now guys, Blair Turger, who's obviously just coming as a substitution, running with the ball here, crosses the ball in, looks for Yanuzaya and you know, it's a battle of the, for the ball and no one can win it and the game actually does finish at full time guys, 1-0 to West Ham. A very poor um, game for us but you know, we do find ourselves into the next round and we could either meet up against um, the likes of Southampton, Bolton, uh, Liverpool and Arsenal actually knocked out there, which is shocking. Mario Rega then says he wants to be um, so, um, be transfer listed, which is um, disappointing, but I can't do anything about that. You know, he's a good player, but it looks like we're going to be left to lose him. And as you can see, Philippe Marcano, our youth player, some stats with him, looking like he's going to be a very good player. But now, guys, we have a game coming up against Chelsea. We do play our full strength side, so McGeady, Menez, and Andy Carroll come back into the team with Ravel Morrison and Co. So, a very good um, team for us, and hopefully we can get three points here against Chelsea. Obviously, it's such a good team. You know, it's looking like we're not going to pick up the points in this one, really. Uh, Chelsea top of the table, but a win here could really assert our authority and our intentions this season. So the Chelsea team line up with Courtois, Azpilicueta, Cahill, Louise, Baines, Mikel Ramirez, Moses, Hazard, I believe, De Bruyne, and Mario Mandzukic. A very strong team there. But anyway, guys, it, our first chance does fall to us in the 15th minute. Andy Carroll heads the ball on into Sebastian Rode and tons of space. Plays it into the path of Aidan McGeady. Uses his pace and power, guys. Like I said, I've been praising him so much. He puts the ball in, and no way is anyone going to get that. Andy Carroll comes in at full acceleration, really, guys. At full power, you're not going to stop Andy. He runs in and headers it into the back of the net, guys. So that is 1-0 to West Ham, and it's fantastic for us. So... I'm very happy with that goal. Obviously, we've been battling and battling away, and we finally do get a goal there. So that that, that is so good for West Ham. Um, you know, coming in here as underdogs, and you know you've got someone like Andy Carroll that's going to be putting goals in for us, and he's a danger man, guys. I really do enjoy Andy Carroll. He really is performing for us, and I really do enjoy him. So that's his 11th goal of the Barclays Premier League this season. A well played to Andy Carroll. But moving into the 19th minute now, guys. Chelsea looking to get back into this game with Kevin De Bruyne. Into Mario Mandzukic. Turns his man way too easy there, guys. Just lets loose on the shot. And Adrian's got no chance of keeping that one out. As the Croatian does put that ball into the back of net. The former Bayern Munich man does score the goal. Uh, good link-up play. 
link up play with um, Kevin De Bruyne. I don't know if they used to play with each other at Wolfsburg. I'm not too sure. But yeah, good link up play from him there. As you can see, guys, Moses does pick up the ball. Then plays it into Eden Hazard in the 29th minute now. And Chelsea play it back into Moses. And Chelsea have basically turned their fortunes around just like that, guys. With a goal from Victor Moses. And to make it 2-1 there. Um, Montoya just caught out there from Eden Hazard. You know, he's got the pace to get past him. And Moses picked up um, in the box, unaware. So, you know, under the radar. And he's going to score. But into the 39th minute now, we get a chance to have Aiden McGeady through on goal. Takes a shot. And he just misses there. Unlucky there from the Irishman. He really should be finishing that, in my opinion. But Courtois made himself big, and it was a great save from him. Um, so disappointed there. He literally got the faintest of touches on there, and we nothing we could do. Moving to the second half now. And David Luiz puts in a free kick here. Headed down from Mandzukic, causing us all kinds of problems. The Bruyne uses his strength to get ahead there. Puts the ball into Mero Mandzukic at the back post. Completely unmarked, guys. And he's going to put that ball into the back of the net every single day of the week. So Chelsea now have that two-goal cushion to make it 3-1 in this game. But, guys, we move on into the 51st minute now. Um, looking to get back into this game. And um, Menez does capitalise on a the problem there from Aspia Quayle an error. The ball gets put into Andy Cowell, but the header is saved from Thibaut Courtois. And the game still remains at 3-1. Moving into a couple minutes later now, 55 minutes in, Aidan McGeady picks up the ball here. Good little bit of um, dribbling and pace and skill for him there to get past his man. Takes the shot and puts that into the back of the net. Aidan McGeady, the man in form, gets the goal back for us and um, puts us pretty much back in this game. You know, we've still a lot of the second half yet to play. It is now 3-2 and that goal deficit has been cut down to 1. So that's a good news from a West Ham point of view. Oh, we can see Aidan McGeady. It was fantastic. You know, he's been a great player for us. He's really come out of his shell and he's got the goal. So now, guys, the game is going to be coming in more interesting and hotting up it is now West Ham United 2 Chelsea 3 so it's going to be a good one four goals in the BPL for Aidan McGeady moving into the 62nd minute now pick up the ball here with Jerry Menez um, picked up the ball I believe from Joe O'Brien obviously because Luke Shaw is out with injury here is Menez across the ball in and oh he nearly finds the back of net there um, goalkeeping error and I believe that was Vaz Taylor kind of with the shot actually and it was just wide. Actually, it was Ravel. Um, we pick up the ball here in the 68th minute. The ball falls back into Andy Cowell. Plays it in to Jerry Menez. Menez with the ball. Cross it back in. Looking for Andy Cowell. Misses and falls to Roda. Plays it into um, Fernand Fernando. Not Fernandinho. Uh, Fernando runs all the way up to the byline. Plays it in. Uh, headed, his, like, headed away. And headed away yet again. So we're causing a lot of troubles here. Into the 87th minute now, guys. Looking to get our last chance of the game. Cowell plays it into Fernando. In to Sebastian Roda. Can we get a shock um, result in this one? Here comes Roda, crosses it into the back post, and no one can reach it, guys. And unfortunately, the game does finish 3 2 to Chelsea. So the team from London obviously get the win over us. You know, it was a local derby, but nothing we could do about that. And London at the moment is blue, very much blue with, with them at the top of the table. And then Yanazai comes into the office and says, Can we discuss wages? I'm more than happy to do that. Offer him the 20k a year with a year extension, 20k a week, and the year extension onto his contract with that five year um, bonus of a goal. So we have to see if he accepts that later on. As you can see, now we're coming to Brunby in the Europa League Cup. Well, Europa League, actually. I don't know why I said the Europa League Cup. And obviously, we picked a 1 0 win against them last time out, so hopefully, we can get a win in this one. Obviously, the likes of Jan Uzai will be in this one, obviously negotiating a new deal. Uh, Moibe Mega, the man that's unhappy, and Ricardo Vazte, the man that always performs for us. Bromby, obviously, at the bottom of their group, but a win here can see them back in the um, contention to maybe even get a shock promotion, um, promotion from the group or advance from the group. But um, if we get a win here, guys, we're really making a strong case to go through. You know, it's looking like more than likely that we are going to make it through. As you can see, guys, it's the 15th minute now. We pick up the ball here. Great bit of play here from West Ham between Miega and Ricardo Vazte. Ricardo Vazte picks the ball, cuts inside here, and just gets tackled there, and it goes out for a corner ball. So a good start here from West Ham. Ricardo Vazte making himself known, making his presence known, and making the defenders think about what they have to do. Um, and Bia does put the ball in to the head of Ricardo Vazte, and of course he's going to finish that, guys. 70 minutes in on West Ham take the lead in this one and it's looking like at in front of the home fans and know with that lead now it may be looking like we're not going to drop points now and making it look like we've basically booked our place into the knockout stages so obviously fingers crossed we're not holding our breaths just yet but um yeah it's looking like we're looking comfortable at the moment and that's a good goal from Ricardo Vazte he's off celebrating with the man that has set him up and Bia who's been a good sign for us guys I might add he has been very good and, yeah, as you can see, that's eighth goal in the Euro League there for Ricardo Vazte, and it's a great goal. Moving to the 22nd minute now, guys. A great over-the-top ball into the path of Modi Bamiega. You think the keeper's going to be coming out, but he don't. He hesitates a little bit. He takes the shot and produces a good save there. Into the 27th minute, Modi Bamiega picks up the ball yet again, linking up with Ricardo Vazte beautifully in this game. What a ball that was from Ricardo Vazte. Um, Miega takes it down with ease, takes the shot, and, again, it's a good save there from their goalkeeper. So, Miega not scoring. So, maybe looking like it could be an option for him to go. He's not finishing these easy chances. Miega then picks up the ball yet 
again. Plays it into the path of Ricardo Vastel. Usually strips to get ahead of his man. Takes the shot and makes it 2-0. Getting his ninth goal in the Euro League this season for Ricardo Vastel. The Portuguese man has been in such good form and I really do like him. Um, he really is a club hero and a cult hero really in this episode. In this series, should I say. So it's a great goal there from Ricardo Vazte. Half an hour gone and we've doubled our lead. And it's Ricardo Vazte yet again using his um, areas of strength and expertise to um, obviously get the goal. You know, no way the um, full-back's going to be um, at strength from Vazte from there. And he does get the goal. So the keeper's obviously left gutted looking at his defence thinking where it's gone wrong. And that's his ninth goal in the Euro League for the Portuguese man now. 2-0 to West Ham. Moving to the 37th minute now. Yanis, uh, I picks up the ball. With Monte Romiega, great link up play yet again from West Ham. His front three playing fantastically. Yanisai puts the ball in, looking for Ricardo Vaste with the header, and it nearly completes his hat trick there, guys. But unfortunately, um, it's just the wrong side of the post there, and Ricardo Vaste cannot put the ball into the back of the net. So obviously disappointed, but there's nothing we can do about that. And um, Bromby are holding on. Moving into the second half now, guys, 64th minute. Diami picks up the ball here, plays it into Mbia, uh, takes the ball down, takes the shot, lets loose, and it just deflects off a player there and goes wide. So obviously, we do win a corner from this one, guys, and it is going to be Mbia that fix this one in. He Puts the ball in. It forced Ricardo Vaste yet again with the header. And he does complete. He said, oh, no, he don't. It's actually James Collins. That does look like Ricardo Vaste. I remember thinking that in the actual episode. I was like, James Collins? No, surely not. But it is actually James Collins that gets the goal here. From... Um, the fast time, the real time replay, it does actually look like it's a Ricardo Vazte goal. I don't know how Collins got his head onto this, but guys, look at the replays. From this angle, it looks like Ricardo Vazte got the goal. You know, I'm trying to think, where has this goal come from? This angle, you might be able to see it better. It is actually James Collins that gets his head wrapped around that ball and into the back of the net. So it's now 3-0, guys, and it's basically looking like we are contenders now for that Europa League knockout spots now, which is fantastic for the club. Um, and James Collins gets his first goal in the Euro League. Moving to the 71st minute now, guys. Mario Miega tries to um, capitalise on some poor defending here. He does. Plays it into Vazte and then looks for um, a Taylor. But um, the defender gets it. I don't know what he was thinking because he lets it go. It falls into Matty Taylor. And the Englishman with the left foot bullet is going to put it into the back of the net. You know, it's a great finish. I'm very happy to see um, Taylor getting on the score sheet too. Poor defensive error, and Taylor's just going to put that into the top corner. It's an easy enough goal. It's probably one of the easiest goals he's going to score in his career and in this um, episode, like, in this career series too. So Matt Taylor's obviously going to be ecstatic with that goal. Good to see the 30-plus um, the 30, 30 year old getting on the score sheet. You know, always good to see. I'm very happy for him. And as you can see, we're moving to the 78th minute now, guys. 4 0. And we're looking like to be cruising. But look, again, guys, a poor defensive error. Mario Miega then capitalised on this one. And surely not. We're not going to score another one, are we? Miega puts the ball in. It's headed. Well, it's a poor touch away. Falls into Matt Taylor yet again. He gets his second goal of the game. So late goals galore um, from Matt Taylor. You know, um, a very clinical substitution. That's what going to be the episode is going to be called. Clinical substitution. Matt Taylor. What a goal that was, you know. And he's really proven to be, you know, age is just a number. Um, it is. It definitely is age just a number, you know, because he's just performing like a youngster there. Probably better than Yanuzai, you know. Even though Yanuzai did get a goal this episode, he, Yano, he's he's done more than Yanuzai in this game. Gets his third goal in the Euro League. So well played for Matt Taylor, and that is how the game's going to finish, guys. A massive final victory over Bromby, and it's an easy enough victory. So guys, I'm going to leave you looking at the squad report here. It looks like we've got Europa League qualification in the bag. Obviously, disappointing defeat against Chelsea, but anyway, I hope you did enjoy this episode, guys. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, as it really does help my channel grow and help me out. And um, yeah, guys, all I can say is have a nice day and yeah see you guys next time